Hail fella, you all should probably have seen words image stabilization in specs of modern smartphones. This is being used in professional photo and video shooting for a long time, but has got to the world of smartphones only in 2012 with Nokia Lumia 920. In this video we dig deep about different types of image stabilization, how do they work and what is the best method nowadays that will keep your Instagram on top. My name is Bogdan, welcome to Techfellas. The oldest one is an optical stabilization. It works by changing the optical path of the light beam from the front lens to the sensor. It can be done by the movement of both lens and or a sensor. For example, our budget camera Lumix GX80 uses sensor shift stabilization. On the contrary, in smartphones it is not so popular. Actually, I've never heard about such one, so the much common things are these rotating pieces of glass. In a digital camera you can supplement the sensor shift with a lens that has its own OIS for the maximum effect, but I think it's not far away when these technologies will become available in the mobile market. Anyway, any of these methods can be described by the number of axes that determines in which direction the lens can move. The more axes are available, the wider range of movements stabilization can compensate. Now, how all that stuff was advertised. When Lumia 920 hit the market, the companies wanted you to believe that optical lenses will give you the possibility to mainly shoot smooth videos on your phone, kinda like with cameras used in movies. Bullsh**! Neither mobile nor full-fledged OIS won't relieve you from wandering camera effect because of the limited space of lens tilting. In smartphones it is just a scrap of a millimeter for each of the axes. All it will do is to reduce the frame shaking from the hand tremor and the resulting image smearing. However, for taking photos such a feature is just what the photo doctor recommended. First of all, it successfully fights against the unwanted blurring. Secondly, it allows you to lower ISO during the day and make the shutter speed slower without sacrificing photo quality. Plus, it opens up bracketing even without you using a tripod. In a sunny day, this will help to take a clear HDR picture and at night, respectively, taking photos with the night mode. In total, for pictures, it is very handy. An important thing in all that is that the higher the focal length in your device, the more optical stabilization you need for the best shot. Because in such case, the distortion of the shooting area increases when you move the smartphone itself. Just for your understanding, in wide-angle cameras the focal length ranges from 16 to 20 mm, when in a telephoto it jumps to 300. Guess where the stabilization effect will be less needed? Wide-angle, of course. That is why action cameras with fisheye lenses take everything relatively smoothly and clearly without any built-in crazy stuff. In turn, the pics from a telephoto camera with 5x zoom, for instance, is suffering without OIS, and you can take a clear photo from your hands only at a very fast shutter speed that entails just a wild noise on the original picture when shooting in a bad lighting. That is why in modern smartphones it is very difficult to take a decent night photo by using zoom. I forgot to say sorry to professional photographers for not using enough $10 words. The point of this video is not in reading Wikipedia, but sending the information to your head in its simplest form with clear words. And my wild accent. But let's move on. Next goes an electronic stabilization, aka the digital, as well as many people call it the software one. The first two are literally synonyms and mean the same thing. The technology works in a way that the unit detects camera movement and shifts the actual area of capturing the frame in the opposite direction by means of a buffer. In professional cameras the buffer is usually an unused part of the sensor. In smartphones the software is making a simple crop, so when stabilization is turned on often you can spot that the viewing angle decreases. Some devices analyze image for that purposes and compensate shaking on the go, others use gyroscope available in every smartphone, but nevertheless the truth is the same. While taking video the camera software changes the area of frame capturing in real time. As for the software stabilization, the same balls only a side view, and the whole process happens when you stop filming. It's all about software motion analysis. The similar algorithm is used in video editing apps. In Adobe Premiere Pro it's called Warp Stabilizer, for instance. If you see that everything shakes while shooting a video, but the output is smooth, 
It means the smartphone uses software video stabilization, not a digital one. You realize that I was making an accent on video here. It's because electronic stabilization doesn't give a damn on photo shooting at all. It is useful only for smoothing the clips by making the difference between video frames less noticeable, sometimes even by stretching or warping the frames, that's all. But this process still may cause distortions. In results, the frames won't become clearer and the noise will remain. The most modern smartphones have digital or software stabilization, but the main question you should ask, will it work while capturing 4K video? And even if it does, how hard will it hit the picture quality? Well, and the most sophisticated method of image stabilization, in fact, is the one used not inside the smartphone, but rather outside of it. These are various gimbals, steadicams and rigs on which you can attach a camera or a smartphone and it will try to keep your device in one point of space regardless of your movements. They can be mechanical, electronic and even natural. Mechanicals are the one people tend to make in a workshop because, frankly, they have a simple structure, although are not very effective. As for the regular electronic gimbals, it is worth noting products of DJI Osmo Mobile series. Unlike digital stabilization, Steadicam doesn't decrease clarity and image resolution, as well as it is not limited by mediocre degrees of freedom that I mentioned in optical stabilization, because of a bunch of additional pivoting mechanisms with a broader range of uh, motions. The last thing I wanna share in this video is the witty junctions of all these technologies and optical stabilization that we see in Vivo X50 Pro. Spoiler alert, get ready for its detailed review soon. Here, the entire main camera unit seemingly dances inside the smartphone. This won't compensate every possible movement, but compared to the classic OIS, this is a significant step forward. And most importantly, everything happens in the smartphone itself. And this is it for today. If you like this video, then why not to support our channel by subscribing to it, hitting the like button and ringing the bell to stay tuned for more cool content. My thanks for watching and cheers!